Hi there, it's Joseph, and welcome back to the YouTube channel on San Miguel de Allende Secrets. And today we're going to chat some about me being a ghoul teacher. As always, in the descriptive box below, there are links if you need more information to various websites, including Amazon. If you're interested in purchasing any of the best-selling books in the San Miguel de Allende Secrets book series. During a recent dance class in Escobedo, about 30 minutes south of San Miguel de Allende, I happened to learn the tiny town had a cemetery. I assumed the former residents of Escobedo now resided in nearby Celaya's rather large, if ill-kept, cemetery. But I was wrong. The funerary business has been booming in Escobedo for some time now in unexpected ways. On the way to class last week, I asked my co-teachers, Chris and Martin, if they could drop me off at the cemetery and I'd be a bit late for class. After years of teaching and traveling together, they are good sports and didn't question me. However, they told the students why I would be late, and each and every one of them questioned me endlessly upon my return on why I went to the cemetery. Basically, I've always liked cemeteries and long wished to live by one. Dead neighbors are so much easier to get along with than the live ones. Plus, I enjoy the art and the landscaping laced among many biographies of the folks resting there. In addition, it is an endless source of cool names. I wasn't surprised to learn that Agatha Christie went to cemeteries to find names for her murder mystery characters. I was kind of surprised to learn that for Mexicans on vacation, sleeping at cemeteries was once an economical way to avoid hotel expenses. Again, it wasn't zombies that concerned me with that plan as much as vandals. Cemeteries were where I learned how to drive. With flat-to-the-earth headstones, there was nothing for me to run over. I used the same location for my kids with their big wheels and bikes. While they pedaled about, I learned all the former residents of our town. Every society leaves their mark on history based on how they treat their dead. Think of the Egyptians and their pyramids. Escobedo is no exception. It was by none, by n bar none, excuse me, the most haphazard cemetery I've been to in Mexico. There were literally no walking paths, and one had to hop tombstone to tombstone to make it around the cemetery. Not an inch of real estate was wasted. That may explain why thrice the walls of the cemetery have been removed and the cemetery expanded. If you plan on living a bit more but want to have space for your remains, Escobedo is the place to go. Art in Escobedo Cemetery is also intriguing. Naturally, there are a lot of Guadalupe's, but here she is in full force alongside the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Yet both these images pale in comparison to the number of trumpet-bearing angels. The angel shushing the crowd while holding on to her trumpet is my favorite funerary art in our San Miguel de Allende Cemetery. The irony of requesting quiet so she can blow her horn is not lost on me. However, this image, I thought, was unique to San Miguel de Allende. Nope. She's all over Escobedo. But my visual interest was drawn to the three-foot replica model of Escobedo's church on a tomb. Right down to having folks placed inside, the tomb's model was a dead-on replica. Pun intended. My Escobedo students were aghast I went to their cemetery. In my defense, after three years of volunteer teaching in Escobedo, I know there are no museums, hotels, restaurants, or shops to capture my interest. I think they think I'm a vampire, for which I do have the proper coloring. Honestly, I simply have a good time and was impressed by both the art and the town's economical use of real estate and expansion efforts. As always, feel free to click the subscribe button below and you'll get notification of new videos as they come out almost daily here on the channel for San Miguel de Allende Secrets.